Hi, this is Richard with Sewing Machine Tips and Tricks. And today I have a Kenmore, a little bit newer Kenmore, um, model number 385.191.10600. Okay. And uh, according to my customer, it works. It uh, doesn't have a problem, but it needs to be serviced. Well, um, what my what my customers consider not having problems and what I consider not having problems is two different things, okay? Will it so? It probably will. Does that mean it doesn't have problems? Um, well, not necessarily. So... Uh, let's, I've just kind of looked over this and let's, uh, let's look at this and see what problems I can see just on, on, just by a cursory look. All right. So first and foremost, we have a pedal and a power cord and, um, this is the pedal. Um, I've already taken it apart and looked. This has been spliced in here, which is okay. The splice is fine, but this is kind of crazy. So I'm gonna make a repair to this. I don't have the specific part that I need, the specific um, um, clamp that goes on here to hold this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use an epoxy uh, to hold this in place. And so the, the specific clamp that goes in here is, uh, a, has a two part purpose. A is to hold it and keep it from, um, uh, tearing up the wire so that you don't get shocked or electrocuted. And so they've got that part covered, right? As long as this tape stays in, in place. But what they don't have covered is if this gets yanked on, it can tear. It, this is just hooked to a computer board in there, and that's it. It can rip that out of there, okay? Um, well, nobody would intentionally just grab it and yank it and rip it, right? But what would happen if it was plugged in and um, she got up and started walking away and she tripped over the cord? and the foot pedal got caught. Um, I've personally done that. I have personally just here at my workbench done that, and I've had many people tell me they've had a similar experience. That could absolutely rip everything apart in this pedal. So that being said, I'm going to fix that. Uh, secondly, here's the power cord, and for whatever reason, it got damaged or something, or maybe they wanted to, I don't think they wanted to extend it. It doesn't look that like it's that much longer. So I'm just gonna assume that the end of it got damaged. Um, and they put a different cord on it, different cord end on it, which is cool. And even using these, I mean, it they, they don't, it's not the best looking repair, but when they're used properly, they're fine. They work fine. The problem comes in is when you don't use them properly and you have this sticking out so that there's a possibility of uh, someone getting shocked or electrocuted, especially if you have kids in the house. And I know that they do. They have several children um, as well. There is a possibility if this starts fraying or if something falls across it that is that is conductive, that you can get it to arcing out. Now, that's a two-part thing. Um, the likelihood that it would cause a fire isn't real likely. It's possible, it's possible, but it's not real likely. Uh, and I say that, I say that because of today, how uh, breakers and stuff are made. Now, depending on their house, depending on a few other things, if, if their breaker doesn't pop or they've got fuses instead and the fuses don't pop, then it increases the likelihood of a fire, fire in the case I'm talking about. But 
um, providing that everything works properly, you could blow a fuse or pop a breaker, which isn't a big deal, but it's an annoyance as well. This is an electronic machine. It's not a, just an electric machine, it's an electronic machine. Uh, arcing this could absolutely burn something up inside this panel, okay? It could absolutely burn something up inside this machine in the power board, which it was either on the bottom or in the back. I think it's on the bottom in, in this particular machine. Anyway, so um, if you're going to do this, make sure that you cut those short enough so that it's properly properly goes in there and reducing the risk of tearing up your equipment or hurting someone, all right? And I mean, I'm just doing this and they're kind of pulling out. So I'm assuming that I could pull these out pretty easily. Um, anyway, so if you're gonna use them, just use them right. If you've got questions on this, let me know. Um, on this particular thing, I'm not gonna repair this. I'm simply going to replace the cord. And why? Because it's cheaper for me to replace this cord than it is for me to make a repair. It costs me much less time. It's going to cost them less money. So we will replace the cord. Um, and again, I will fix this. I'll do it a little bit later. Now, there's a new cord. Um, I've got this right here and it won't stay shut. So let's take a look at it. Well, right here is the latch, okay, that's supposed to hold this. And first of all, it's broke, almost broke in half here. So I'm going to epoxy that in place. So before it just completely breaks and have to get a whole new door um, as well, this thing's loose. Okay, so as well, it's loose on the plastic here. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll take, I'll take uh, the screws out. I'll take these screws out on the other side of this hinge and I'll put these about where they need to be and I'll tighten it up um, and I'll fix this and then I will make and I'll adjust this adjust it so that it will properly stay shut the way it's supposed to, which will um, be less chance of it getting destroyed, right? Um, now, on to the next issue that I've found so far. Okay, we're gonna take that out because there's stuff in here that moves. But now we've got that off, there shouldn't be anything in this machine that really makes noise, but, whoops, I hit my, hit my camera. We'll raise that up. And that's falling open. I think you can hear that though. Hear that? I don't know what it is, pins maybe. In fact, one of them just fell out. So there, there are pins in here. There's one that just fell out. Um, maybe that's the only thing. Maybe the pins have done some damage in there. Actually, there's another one. I got two of them fa falling out. So I'm going to take this apart. And I'm going to show you how to remove the pins that fall down in your machine. And hopefully, wow, there's two more. Holy crap. So that's a total of four pins that have already fallen out of this thing. Um, and there's another one, a bent one. So this one, this one actually got caught in something. Maybe it got caught in the gear. Maybe it got caught on the hook. Um, maybe it done some damage. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to get pins out of your machine when they fall down in there and you can't find them. Uh, by turning this... So it turns okay. And if we look down here, the metal, the hook, seems to turn okay. Let's get some light on it. You can see it turning. It looks like it's turning just fine. 
doesn't look to have a problem. If I put uh, some pressure on it and try to turn it back and forth, it doesn't seem to be loose or doesn't seem to have any problems, but we're gonna check the gear out and see, see what's going on with it. Uh, but first, let's, uh, well, let's first take this off here, okay? Hmm. So I'm gonna take this off. There's that one. And I'll put the screw. Oh, you didn't see what I did. So I took the top one out right there. Sorry about that. Now I'm gonna take the bottom one out and uh, just try to hold it here. keep from dropping or losing anything there we go and uh, I'll set that to the side and I'm going to use uh, my what waterworks I think it is epoxy on that um, here in a little bit so we will we'll see how that does well I know I'll do it'll do just fine and you see how this is moving Okay, so anyway, we will, we'll get that taken care of here in a bit. Now, that's out of the way. Let's put my bucket to the back. Let's turn this, make sure there's nothing, okay. Turn this on its back, and let's open this up. Oh my gosh, look at this, look at this. So I've got a pin sticking out here, and it's bent. So it's got damage. All right, it's been damaged, got caught in something. All right, I got a pin sticking out here. Um, I can't get it out, but it's bent. And I've got another one sticking out here, and it's bent. So who knows what I'm going to find in here. <laughs> Let me get this before I break it. All right, so the first thing is we're going to take this bottom right here off. So there's this screw and this screw. And this screw. <laughs> and this screw. <laughs> and then just to make this, this will probably come out. No, no, no. Just to make this simple, okay. Wow, that screw's not even tight. That's crazy. So somebody's been in here and didn't didn't tighten it up and stuff. To make this easy, I'm just gonna take this whole piece right here off so I don't have to fight this bar. And that requires me to remove this screw. <laughs> this big one right here. Um, and this one for sure. And maybe this one, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, okay, there we are. So that one there, there it is. So I don't have, didn't have to remove that one. Look at that, oh my God. Look at all these pins. This is insane, I'm gonna get my magnet for this. There's one here, two there. Several here. Move this. There's a bunch more right down in there. <laughs> We're going to count these. And there's a broken needle. That one's a damaged one. There's some more in here. I think. Maybe not. I thought there were. Okay. There one just fell out. There's still one in there, I hear it. There it is, that one fell out. Here's this one. Holy God, man. Okay, so that's that. 
and we're going to remove this. <laughs> See if there's anything in here. So leaving machine or leaving leaving uh, pins in a machine is probably not the best idea if you want to uh, keep your machine in good shape because there is a chance of tearing stuff up in there. Okay. Anyway, here we go. There's another one that fell out there. Here are. Two more, <laughs> right there, right there. So there's two more of them. And there's a bunch of junk in there. Um, I'll just pour it out here right now. All right, get rid of that. <laughs> Let's get a count on these needles. Or on all this stuff right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a broken needle. Ow! Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 there, plus what's already fallen out, which was, I don't remember, maybe five or six. Okay, so 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So there is 30 pins, one broken needle. And uh, there's another broken pin. That makes 31 right there. And that's provided that none fell out that I missed. Um, and who knows how many may have fallen out. Um when they were bringing the machine to me or even when I was bringing it from the front of my house to my workshop. Who knows? Uh, that's crazy. That's, that is literally insane. So all these, all of this is trash. Trash, trash. Okay, throw it away. There we go, gone. All right, now, let's uh, just turn this up and see if anything else falls out of it. <laughs> There's another one right there. So what was that, 31? That's 32. <laughs> Who knows how many more are in this thing? Well, so far, no more have fallen out. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see. If I see any apparent damage, I'm looking at the gear here. I'm, oh. I'm looking at the gear here. I'm looking at these lobes and I'm looking at this lobe. <laughs> okay. Looking to see if I see any damage. And luckily I don't. That even moves. There's a good bit of there's a good bit of lint in here. In fact, you can see lint stuck right here. <laughs> even. So I'm a don't know it for a fact, but I'm assuming used uh air on this machine to blow try to blow lint out of here, which doesn't do you any good. Really, it well, it doesn't do any good at all. It doesn't take the lint out. It just moves it around, and you're risking um, 
causing more damage to your machine, especially on an electronic machine. So that's not something I recommend doing. If you're going to use air on it, you need to be able to open it up and get all the crap out of it. All right. So anyway, I'm going to, I don't see any immediate damage to it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this apart and blow all this out, clean it, and uh, clean all this crap up off of it. Do some more inspecting to make sure everything's okay. And then I'm going to lubricate it. I'll lubricate the bushings here and here. There will be a couple of bushings up top as well as lubricating the uh, needle bar and this uh, take up take up lever assembly, everything that moves there. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's take a gander here. We're gonna take this uh, needle plate off real quick. And we're going to take the um, bobbin case out. I don't think you see me. I just removed one screw and removed that. Um, we got some damage right here. It's not, it's not major, major damage, but it's definitely some pretty heavy damage. Um, I can probably clean this up. In fact... That's going to be my only choice because my customer is going to be here day after tomorrow to pick this up. And I don't have time to order a new one and get it in. So I've got damage right here. I've got damage right there. Um, and I've got damage here. Oh, my God. I've got a lot of damage right there. Dang. Dang, dang. I'm going to see if I can get a bobbin case here quicker. I'm going to look and see and see if it's possible. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go do that right now. And, um, um, then I'm going to finish taking this apart. There are screws right here. I'm going to remove this screw so that I can take this piece off. And then um, for the top, I'm going to remove these two screws and this screw. That top should come off. And then I've got this screw and this screw and the side should come off. I probably got a screw in here that shoots in over here that helps hold this. And I've got a screw right in here. It holds the front of this. Um, I don't know if I, yeah, I've got a screw right here that holds this. Then I'll have to make sure this is down and pull this out. And I'll have to uh, use some of my little tools to pry this apart and get it apart. Um, if you want to see the rest of this, if you want to see... Uh, if you want to see the rest of the service, go check out my Patreon account. That is Swim Machine Tips and Tricks on Patreon. There are chapters over there, clickable chapters in the video as well. There is a search function in the video. So if you're looking for a specific thing, if you're, if you're working on, if you come back to a video and you're working on repairing something, you're trying to find a specific thing, you can type uh, the specific thing in the search bar and it will actually take you to that part of the video where I'm talking about that. So if you're looking for bobbin case repair or needle plate repair or whatever, if you, if you type that in the search bar, it will show you every place that I have said that in the video and you can click on, on each one to go there to, to find find that part of the video it's a subscription base and there are several different levels <clears throat> but it starts at two dollars two dollars a month so you go over there sign up for two dollars or whatever you're comfortable with as well when you sign up you get you get a discount for my entire website for the entire time that you are a member of that community 
It's not just a one-time discount. It is a discount for the entire time. Uh, two dollar, two dollar subscription gets you a uh, ten percent discount, and the discounts go all the way up to thirty percent. So, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever works for you, whatever you can afford. Anyway, go check that out. Sewing machine tips and tricks on Patreon as well. There will be a link below this video, and y'all have a great day.